Hey, it's Mike from Party Four Crafts again, back in the shop with another video. Today I'm going to talk about why isn't your Glowforge cutting all the way through. There's several reasons for this. Some of them are in the shop and some of them are on the computer, so I'll switch back and forth between the two. So first couple of things to check while you're in the shop. If your material is not flat, the Glowforge can't cut. Usually this, the sign of this is that it's cutting at one end and not at the other. So your crumb tray, there are notches that the crumb tray sits in that you can see uh, under there. And if it's not in those notches, then it won't sit flat. So the back will be higher one side. You could have one side in the notches and the other not. So to get it in the notches, you pull it all the way forward so that this lip is hanging over and then move it side to side until it gets in the notches. And now it's really in there. And it's to the point that it goes inside the door when you close the door. So once that's done, it's in there and it's flat. Another possibility is that sometimes you have crumbs sticking up through the crumb tray. And if one of them is black, you might not even see it. There's a, a crumb right there and right there that you could barely see. There might be one sticking up and uh, it would lift your wood up at one end and then that would cause a problem. Um, another possibility is that your wood might be warped. So some wood is just like this wood is really curved and if you lay that down it's not going to be flat no matter what you do. So to fix that you get these honeycomb pins that you can get off the Glowforge website or the forums and you use these to pin your wood down. And some people make them out of acrylic because when you make, they're supposed to be made out of draft board. When you make them out of draft board, they fall apart pretty quickly. And some of them seem to be made to, to go in straight like this. These won't go in that way very well. And some of them seem to be made to go in at an angle. These are going in pretty good at an angle. So now this wood is flat. Push it all the way down. My crumb tray is flat. I don't have any crumbs sticking up to make my wood not flat. So I should be able to eliminate that as the cause. Now, one time you have to be careful with honeycomb pins. There was one time I didn't push one in all the way and I was using a really expensive cutting board and I was trying to put that there to keep it straight and the fan came and hit the pin and it knocked the head loose and ruined an expensive cutting board. So make sure you push your, your honeycomb pins all the way down in there. Next thing you're going to want to check for is cleaning. Um, there's several things that you need to clean. I have another video I highly recommend that you watch about cleaning the fans. The exhaust fan back there is not going to affect your cuts. It's going to affect the smokiness in your room. But this fan back here will affect your cuts. That's the air assist fan. And if it's not blowing over the wood, uh, your wood's not getting enough air. It's going to be flamey. It's going to have soot inside of the crack. And then the laser won't be able to get through that crack. So this is nice and clean. I spray it with contact cleaner. And it's, it's working really well. So I would check those. Check that. Uh, make sure that um, everything's clean. I would give it a quick cleaning, maybe even pop it off and check the underside, make sure there's no clogs in the vent underneath. Next thing I would check for cleanliness is the optics, and there's several places that you have to check optics. There's a mirror that you lift this top off, and this blue thing right here is a mirror, and so you check that. And my mirror has never really been dirty. I don't know how smoke would even get up there, so I don't pay much attention to the mirror. But then underneath the head is the lens. To get this off, it's also held on with magnets. You kind of lift it up and pull it towards you. And be careful with that cable. You can break that clip, but then that cable will fall off constantly. The lens is down inside of there. You can see mine is a little dirty right now. I see a lot of people who pull their lenses out and they drop them and crack them. So I, I don't pull my lens out. I just curl up the corner of a microfiber cloth, put some alcohol on it, and then just twist it in there and it cleans up nice and good. 
clean the, these other glass here too. That's your red laser and some of the distance sensors. You may put some contact cleaner on your cloth and, and wipe those pins too because that's how the power gets to the fan and, and things like that. Okay, also on this side is the window. So this is the laser head. It's not the actual laser. The laser is not generated in this part. The laser comes out of the tube, hits a mirror, hits another mirror, mirror, and then it comes through this and hits the mirror that we just looked at and then goes down through the lens. So if any of those mirrors or the windows that, that keep the mirrors from getting dirty, if any of those are dirty, then the power of your laser is going to be weakened. So you clean the mirror in here, clean the lens in the bottom. You can use that blue tool to take the lens all the way out and give it a good cleaning. I just don't want to pull that out and have the possibility that something could go wrong with it. You have the window here, and then there's another window right back there that you need to clean. Don't worry about cleaning the glass and the laser tube. That has nothing to do with the power of the laser. So there's no way um, that that could be it. Another reason why your laser might not be cutting through is that you're using cheap Home Depot or Lowe's wood. Most of their wood is plywood. You can see in this wood the layers, and between the layers is glue. And if the middle layer has a void, that void can fill with glue. Either that or it's just an empty void, and that ruins your project too. But if that void fills with glue, the laser can't cut through that glue. So it might just be cheap wood. But if you're using proof grade wood or wood from one of the, the big companies that are popular in the groups like um, Okooch and Cerulean Tides, places like that, then it's probably not the wood. But if you're using wood from Home Depot or Lowe's, then that is highly likely to be the problem. Okay, so that's all of the options in the workshop. I'm going to show you a couple of other things that you can try on the computer, and then that should wrap it up. I, I hope it fixes your problem. If none of these fix your problem, then it's likely that you might have to send your unit back to Glowforge for servicing. I forgot to mention also for cleaning, the camera is up here in the lid. And if that's dirty, then it won't autofocus properly. You can't align things properly and it won't read the labels on your proof grade material properly. So um, I should have mentioned that you should clean that also if you're having issues. All right, I'll see you back in the computer screen. Okay, I'm back. So on the computer in the Glowforge app, there are really three things that can affect whether your Glowforge cuts through or not. Those three things are power, speed, and focus. Power and speed are changed inside this part of the Glowforge app. This top row right here is the speed. The faster you go, the less it cuts through. So the number one thing, if your shirt's not the wood, your shirt's flat, you're sure everything's clean and it's still not cutting through, is just slow it down a little bit. If you're at 170 full and it's not cutting through, drop it down to 160 full and see if it cuts through. If that still doesn't cut through but it pokes through the other side in certain places, try 155 full and see if that works. If you have a pro, there's a difference between 100 and full. So if you're at 155, 100 and it's not cutting through, then you can click and um, get that extra five watts of power by putting it on full and that might make the difference. So of course, the power, the more power, the better it cuts. With speed, it was the faster it is, the worse it cuts. So those two are opposite of each other. The final one is if your laser is not focused, then it won't be able to cut properly. So two ways to achieve focus. You can, three ways. You can choose a proof grade wood from the list and the proof grade woods are very precisely measured and they're exactly the same thickness every time, but they're never exactly the same thickness. So I don't recommend that method. Second method is you can go use uncertified material and you can type in your material thickness. So if you measure it with calipers and it is 0.182 inches, you can type 0.182 inches right here and it'll focus it for you. 
but my favorite way is to leave that on auto and you come over here and click set focus. I can't click it right now because my Glowforge is 20 miles away and turned off at the moment, but if it was turned on, I would click set focus and my cursor would turn into a little square. And wherever I click that square, the head of the laser will move to that point and focus on that point right there. That is the foolproof way to do it. So that's it. Those are all of the ways that you can try to figure out why your wood is not cutting all of the way through, some of them in the lab, some of them on the computer. If all of those are working properly and it's still not cutting through, then it's time to send Glowforge an email and you might have deeper issues that only they can troubleshoot. All right, I hope this helps. If you'd like to see when new videos come out, just click the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.